Oh yeah. Why was six scared of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Did you get the joke? I'm not sure if you can see my cards, but the funny thing here is that the number eight, the number eight is all a number, but it's also the verb eat in the past. <laughs> so I hope you understood that joke. And that is what this lesson is about today. Oh yeah, real lifers, what's up? I am Ollie, your real life English fluency coach. If you are new here, then you might know, or you might not know that I am a fluency coach and I'm from Australia, as you can tell from the accent, which is awesome. So you, you might know our other channel, which is Learn English with TV series. And on that channel, on that channel, we help you understand your favorite TV series and movies without missing the jokes. Well, I thought it's Friday and I'm going to bring the jokes to you today over on our real life English YouTube channel. So I'm really excited to have a laugh with you, to let our hair down, which means to relax. And yeah, I'm really excited to tell me that I'm really excited to tell you some jokes and I'm excited for you to, to learn something new. So I can see lots of people um, saying hello, lots of regular people here. We have Zara Rachel saying hi, hi from Iran. Hi from Kurdistan. Hello, everybody. Hi, Ollie. We have people on Facebook. Hi from Poland. Hi from Turkey. It's so great to see so many people from all around the world here. Um, I love connecting with people. I just said that I'm from Australia, but I'm currently living in Brazil and it is absolutely fantastic. So hello to everyone. Oh, this is a lovely comment. We have David saying hi, teacher Ollie. Great to see you. Great to see you too. I think you've been here for all four of the lives, which is awesome. So if you are new here, I want to let you know that every Monday and Friday with the YouTube lives that we help you understand fast speaking natives, be understood by anyone and connect to the world. So if you want to join us and thousands and thousands of learners all from around the world, as you can see in the comments, I would invite you to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. And a bonus, if you love the lives with me, Ollie, this is my fourth one now, if you love the lives, hit that like button and that's going to tell me and the Real Life team that you want to see more and more live English lessons. So hit that like button, which is fantastic. Oh yes, we have someone from South America, Brian Angel Cuervo. How is my pronunciation there? <laughs> oh, we've got someone from Brazil. Hi, Denise. Batista, how are you? Lots and lots of people here. Okay, fantastic. So um, I want to let you know that um, we are actually testing our speaking app at the moment. We ran a test maybe two or three weeks ago and things, things didn't work out, but the app is back up and running. And later in the video, I'm going to show you how you can how the app works and how you can practice your speaking at home by yourself. The link to sign up for the event tomorrow at 3 p.m. CET, Central European time, is in the description, uh, but I will explain this more after the lesson. Okay, so now, as I said, I'm going to tell you some jokes. And if you know a joke, then I want you to write your joke in the comments because um, I have my friend Agnieszka, uh, who is a colleague of mine in the comments, and she is going to put your jokes into a little, um, into a little document. And I'm going to tell three of your jokes at the end of the lesson. All right. Fantastic. So the jokes today are dad jokes and dad jokes use play on words or puns and pun use, puns use words in a humorous or funny way. So if we go back to my example here, uh, sorry, puns often use words that have a similar sound, but a different meaning. Okay. To, and that's why the joke's funny. So if we go back to my card example, why did, why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine, eight here, the, my card eight is the funny thing here because it's a number, but it's also the past tense of uh, the verb eat. So we have 
the similar sound or the same sound, and that's why the joke is funny. All right, so the jokes are often predictable, which is also good. So it takes a high level of vocabulary to understand this, but don't worry, I am here to guide you in this process, and by the end of this lesson, you are gonna understand and be able to tell these jokes to your friends. Can I get, if you are listening or watching, can I get an ah, yeah, in the comments, if you are ready to <laughs> laugh your Friday away? <laughs> Let's get an oh yeah. I'm going to type in an oh yeah in the comments and we are going to make sure that everything is going good. Awesome. All righty. Oh yes, we've got a few oh yeahs. We've got a few oh yeahs. Now, if you're watching on Facebook, I am going to end the stream now um, and I want you to click on the YouTube link and you'll come over to YouTube and you'll be able to interact with people a lot more over on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook, I will see you on YouTube. Okay, everybody. So now we are we are here. We are here. So what we are going to do is start the uh, start the stream. Okay. So can everybody see? Can you understand these jokes? Okay, so this is the focus for today. Uh, I hope there are no technical problems, which is good. <laughs> so um, can you understand these jokes? Let's look at the first one. Why don't eggs tell jokes? Because they'd crack each other up. Now you'll notice that in bold, like the really dark black writing is where the joke is, okay? It's where the joke is. So why don't eggs tell jokes? A joke is when you try and make people laugh, right? In case you weren't clear on that. Yes, David has said crack up and crack up is where the joke is. Does anyone know what crack up means? So crack up means to burst into laughter. So if you laughed when I told you my joke and you went, <laughs> that means you burst into laughter. And the funny thing here is crack up, which means to laugh. If you crack an egg or, or to crack an egg is when you open the egg. So crack an egg and crack up is where the joke is funny. So if we say, why don't eggs tell jokes? Because because they'd crack each other up. <laughs> and then the eggs just crack and then it just happens. So it's important that eggs don't tell jokes because it <laughs> they crack. <laughs> okay. So yeah, great. We have some people saying crack up is to burst into laughter. Oh, we have someone saying, wow, you are funny. Thank you very much. I like when people call me funny. I think it's important to have a good sense of humor Roar with laughter is a good one. Mm, yeah, that's similar to crack up. And a roar is like what lions do. Rawr. I can't believe I just did that live on YouTube. <laughs> All right, let's continue with the next one. So if you think swimming with dolphins is expensive, try swimming with sharks. Swimming with sharks cost me an arm and a leg. Have you heard this expression before? Cost me an arm and a leg. Do you know what cost me arm? Do you know what cost me arm and a leg means? Look for the words in bold to help you. That's going to help you. Uh, we have more people saying what a che how cheerful you are. If you think I am funny, because <laughs> I think I'm funny. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded so narcissistic. If you, if you think this is a funny lesson and you're liking the jokes, hit that like button because that's going to help me out. Yeah, so David, correct. He says it means, cost means very expensive, okay? So you can see that, <clears throat> let me just remove that comment. In my example, I said um, dolphins are expensive. It costs me an arm and a leg, all right? If something costs you an arm and a leg, it's expensive. However, the joke here is that cost in this context means when something is lost. So uh, this is, so look at my example. Losing my friends was the cost of moving. So I lost my friends because I moved. Now, the joke here is that 
yeah, swimming with sharks is probably expensive, but the fact that this person actually physically lost their arm and their leg because the sharks come up and eat, eat the, eat the legs, which is kind of funny. So that's the joke there. All right, let's continue on. If a child refuses to nap, are they guilty of resisting arrest? <laughs> so if you refuse to do something, you're saying, no, I'm not doing it. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, a nap. Does anyone know what nap means? It's a verb, nap, to nap. So there's lots of different ways that you can, you can use nap, um, but maybe somebody in the comments might be able to help me with the, the meaning of nap in this context, just to help people who, who might not be sure. Ah, uh, here we go. Fantastic. A short sleep. Mm. Exactly right. A nap is a short sleep. I like to have a nap every day. M most days, right? We have lots of people saying nap, 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 small sleep. Okay. Now, to resist an arrest, arrest is also like a little nap, right? Arrest is when you don't do anything. Now, the funny thing here is that resisting arrest or refusing to have arrest is like saying the man resisted or let me make this a bit bigger so everyone can see it the man ar the man resisted arrest as he fought with the police officers so arrest is when the police officers put handcuffs on you and take you away so the funny thing here is <laughs> the fact that if a child refuses a nap are they resisting arrest and that's where the joke is Arrest, two words, or arrest uh, is the verb there. Yeah, which is good. Awesome. Okay. So I can see, Riz, you put a you put a joke in the comments. My colleague Agnieszka is going to put them together in uh, a little thing, and I'm going to tell some jokes at the end. All right, let's continue on. Oh, before we continue on, I just want to let you know that uh, we have a native immersion course, and this is a 41-week course where you're going to learn culture. You're going to learn connected speech. You're going to learn lots of new vocabulary, lots of grammar. Um, and it's 41 weeks and we call it native immersion because to immerse yourself means you live English. You breathe English. <sighs> English becomes a part of your everyday. And the best part is you can try it for free today with our three part power learning series. And the link to that is in the description below. If you have tried our three part power learning series, I want you to leave a comment and say why people should do it. Why is the three part power learning series so good? All right, let's continue. All right, we have immersion course is really kicking ass and that means that this person is enjoying it, which is good. So thank you for that, An. That's a great, uh, great testimonial. All right. Oh, Amrit, we have, I am here for the very first time. Welcome. I meant to say at the start, welcome to everybody who is here for the first time. I love seeing new students come and discover real life English and learn with us. Sorry, I better slow down. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at this one. I used to be a personal trainer, then I gave my two week notice. <laughs> so a personal trainer is someone who works out in a gym and they train people with like getting stronger. Now, then I gave my two week notice. Does anybody know what the correct spelling of two week is meant to be? So when you give your notice, if you give a notice, it means that you stop working, okay? That you quit your job, you don't wanna work anymore. You say, here boss, here is my two week notice. I'm not going to work anymore. Fantastic, yes, we got it. Riz, Riz Rachman, two week, ha ha ha, two week. That's the joke, right? Two week, weak, strong, weak. So weak, with an E-A-K is the opposite of strong. And Riz has hit the nail on the head, which means things, he got it correct, uh, with the two week notice. Yeah, awesome, we got someone saying hi. Um, yeah, the native immersion course going back is, is this link, but you can check it in the comments below. All right, let's continue on with the next one. And actually I, I, wrote, I wrote here, I gave my two week notice and, um, one of the followers, I forget your name, sorry, has has told us that. 
Fantastic. All right, let's continue on. How do you get a squirrel to like you? Act like, act like a nut. Does anyone know what it means to act like a nut? So the joke here is to act like a nut. I think this is, I think this saying is American. I think this is American saying, but I think we can also use it in the UK and Australia. So Andrea might be able to help me if she's watching. <laughs> awesome. Great. So act like a nut. Let's see if people know what uh, it means to act like a nut. Okay. Let's see some comments. Act stupid. Good question. Good thinking. <gasps> oh, I like this one. Bernice Gola. Like a crazy person. Yeah, exactly. So if you act like a nut, it means you go crazy. And you could say to your friend, can you stop acting like a nut? We are in the supermarket. And that means that, <laughs> and that means that you don't want your friend to be crazy. Uh, and obviously, squirrels eat nuts. You can see him holding a nut. All righty, Monica. Hello, I see you every week. Great to see you in Poland. That's great. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting point. Squirrel, squirrel. Although I think Ethan says this a little differently, but I say squirrel, squirrel. This is a, it's a difficult word to say, right? <laughs> okay. Oh, go bananas. Excellent. Don't forget to hit that like button if you are enjoying my, my lesson. Okay, let's continue on. What do you call cheese that isn't your cheese? Nacho cheese. <laughs> Does that, <laughs> I've literally looked at these jokes all week and I'm still laughing. That's how funny they are. Does anyone know what the joke is here? So this is American pronunciation, nacho cheese. What does nacho cheese, does anyone know? Oh, we got it, yay, excellent. Not your cheese, excellent. So if Americans speak quickly and they wanna say, that's not yours, they could say, that's not yours, that's not yours. And it kind of sounds like nacho, not your cheese, not your cheese. That's a really good. So I've put not your here. So nice, nice job, Seville. Uh, I'm not sure about the pronunciation there, but nice job there, not your cheese. All right. So I want to go back to what I was talking about very quickly earlier about the app. We have a speaking app that we are testing and that we're going to release in a few months time, but we need your help to see if this app can, can work across the world. And that's why tomorrow at 3 p.m. CET, we are doing a speaking test. Now, I know some of you might have seen this, me advertise this in the past, but it's a really good opportunity for you to practice your English. And guess what? Ethan is going to be there. So you might be able to connect with Ethan. Oh my God, right? Ethan, you know, the, the fluency coach, Mr. V. <laughs> So you can practice your English with him. And we have, yes, oh, yes, our app. We are testing it tomorrow. So that's one of the real lifers saying we are testing it tomorrow. So I'm going to show you in a bit how that works. Um, but to sign up, you can click the link in the description. It's totally free, totally free, 100% free. And who doesn't love free stuff, right? Okay, let's continue on. So what did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing. It just waved. To wave is to do this. And you can see that the big, the big water, psh, we call that a wave. We call that a wave, okay? So the beach refers to the sand area and the ocean refers to the water. So it's just saying, it didn't say anything, it just psh, waved, <laughs> which is quite funny. All righty, excellent, fantastic. All right, let's continue on. Hmm, what time did the man go to the dentist? Tooth early. Ah, tooth early. <laughs> tooth early. Sorry, it's connected. Tooth early. Why is this one funny? It's asking for what time. Why is this funny? <laughs> why is this funny? That's, why is 2.30 funny? Hmm, what time does it actually mean? Oh, great. So we have someone 
Kagen. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. 230. So if you're from Australia and I think maybe in the States and maybe in uh, in England, they say 230 or you might say half past or half after. I think people say that. So the, the joke here is that 230 means 230, the time, right? Hurty is not a word. It's made up, but it's a joke because it kind of sounds the same as 230. Excellent. Nice job, um, Jaswinda, 230. Lots of people saying 230. That's fantastic. Also, it's so good to see 173 people here. Let's see if we can get it to 200. If you can share it with your friends, that's fantastic. All righty. So that is the last joke. That is the last joke that I have for you, unfortunately. I'm going to see... I'm going to go over to the comments and see if um, uh, see what comments you have for me. So we have one joke. Why did the why did the man fall down the well? Because he couldn't see that well. So a well is where you can get water from. So you might remember on Game of Thrones, for example, a lot of them go to the well and get their water out of the well. Uh, so the joke here is that he, oh, where is my, the joke here is that he fell down the well because he couldn't see that well. To, and, and well is the adjective of good. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Double meanings are so funny. Exactly. Hi, Jose Luis Machucha. I see you on the fluency circle. So it's great to see you here over on YouTube, which is fantastic. All righty. So let's tell one more joke. Uh, here's my joke for you, Ollie. What do you call cheese that is not yours nacho cheese oh i think sorry i think we already told that that's fantastic okay here we go um knock knock oh this is a different one. knock knock who's there is it me or it really smells like up dog here what's up dog <laughs> nothing much what's up with you <laughs> I'm going to have to put that on the screen here. I'm going to have to put that on the screen. What's up, dog, is like a... What's up, dog, is like a really informal way, really, really informal way of saying what's up or how are you. So <laughs> you could say that to your friend if you feel very comfortable with them, which is quite funny. What's up, dog? All right. Fantastic, everybody. Great to see so many... Um, great to see so many comments. I like this one. Did you know that fries didn't actually or weren't actually cooked in Greece? That weren't actually cooked in Greece. They were cooked in Greece, which is funny. Or I think this joke is uh, fries weren't made in, cooked in France or made in France. They were made in Greece. And Greece here is the country, but we also cook. Uh, Greece is often referred to cook in oil as well, which is fantastic. All righty. Let's see if I have one more joke and then I'm going to show you how the app works. Okay, let me see what we have. Agnescu is doing a great job here. All right, why why was the math book, why is the math book always unhappy? Because he has a lot of problems. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, maths is full of problems and you have to like sort out the problems, which is quite funny as well. I love all these jokes. Now, if you have another joke, put it in the comments and I will be in the comments for the next 15 or 20 minutes and I will respond to your comments. And also, if you have a question for me, please leave a comment, not in the live chat, after the live, and I will answer your questions for 10 or 15 minutes. So if you have a burning question, let me know. But I now I want to show you exactly how the app works, okay? And I'm going to do that right now. So it's a short video and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll talk uh, after the video. So here we go. Working and listening every day. We're super excited to announce that we have started testing and are getting ready to release the much anticipated Real Life English podcast and speaking app where you will be able to do this at the touch of a button for free. But before we launch our app to thousands and eventually millions of learners from around the world, we're inviting a small group of our friends to get a unique first look. I want to invite you to join us to test the speaking part of the app. And most importantly, we'll use your feedback to guide us in building a world-class 
real life English listening and speaking experience. To apply for our private beta testing program, go to reallifeglobal.com forward slash real life app or click the link in the description. Oh my god. Sorry. Yeah, I was hoping you could me too. <laughs> All good? You're calling from Poland. Yes, I'm from Poland, yeah. yeah. And we have this beautiful weather today at the beginning of April. It should, it's it was it's supposed to be um spring and it's it's snowing right now. So. Uh from Vietnam. Oh you can see? Yeah, what's that? Yeah. We we call Aozai. Aozai. It's uh, here. When do you wear it? I will. Yes, uh, we uh, wear wear it uh, in the uh, national holiday like the lunar New Year. Wow. I'm from Taiwan. You're from Taiwan. Wow. And yeah. Have you been to Taiwan? Not yet. I went to Australia. Oh wow. Where where did you go? What cities? Perth and uh, Melbourne. Wow, you need to go to Sydney. Sydney is the best, I think. I know you're from Colorado. Is there anything like special about your state or about you, the state in general? There is. <laughs> most people tend to think that most Americans are very like overweight, but Colorado has the lowest percentage of obesity of any state in the United States because we are very active. We spend a lot of time in the mountains. We like to go skiing and hiking and uh, go river rafting and spend all of our time in the outdoors. So. That is a fun fact about my state, and if you come here, you definitely have to enjoy the great outdoors. Tell me about you. What do you What do you love about São Paulo? Tell everybody. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, São Paulo is known as as uh, like as also as known like a uh, night city, you know, because here there is a, there are tons of places that to go out of town, like uh, nightclubs and amazing restaurants and. Bars. What's what's good about Curitiba? Well, they say it's a it's a clean place. Like back in the nineties, it was like a model city for like the whole Brazil. Okay, fantastic, guys. So that was a little sneak peek of our um of our app. I'm really excited. The conversations are four minutes. And you can speak to people from all around the world. And as you saw, I went on a journey there. I went to the United States. I went to Taiwan. I went to, uh, I spoke to someone in Thailand. I spoke to lots of different people. Now, the link is, um, you can see it on your screen, but it's also the first one in the description below, okay? It says, test our real life app. So click on that and register for free for the test tomorrow. Uh, can I have a, if you're still here watching, please set, give me an, ah, oh, yeah, if you liked this lesson. Uh, and I wanna know, I wanna know what lessons would you like the live to be about? That's what I wanna know, okay? So what lessons would you like the live to be about? Um, please make sure you leave a comment and I will make sure that I uh, answer that comment for you. I just noticed my just noticed my camera's gone off. I hope it doesn't uh, doesn't disappear. We've got lots of oh yes, we love the lives. We absolutely love the lives. I'm so impressed that 114 people are still here. No technical difficulties, not yet. <laughs> so I want to say thank you so much for watching. I if you're if you are new here and you're not subscribed to the Real Life English YouTube channel, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. And that is it. I will see you next Friday at 4 p.m. CET. Thank you so much for coming, guys. And leave a comment and I will respond. Ah, uh, yeah.